One year I had this, I was about 10, I had this teacher. I had an I was going to marry him. <laughs> I was 10 years old, but that wasn't going to stop me. I was going to marry that woman. <laughs> she was lovely. She was so nice to me. One day she came into the classroom and she said, Boys, I'm sick of stories about war. I don't want to hear any more stories about tanks and guns. I've had enough. Give me something more. Girls, I don't care about lemonade rivers, marshmallow trees, or fairies. <laughs> Give me something more. I looked at my teacher. So I set out to write her a story, a story that was impressive, because I really wanted to impress her. I was going to marry you for goodness sake, come on. <laughs> so I wrote a story, a simple story, about a man going for a walk in the park. So he went into this park and it talked about, just that was it. Nothing else happened. It was his walk in the park and all the things that he saw. So the duck pond and people feeding ducks and families together and the trees and the birds. That was it. It was just a story about a man taking a walk in the park and all the different things that he saw. Terrible spell, you know. This is my nice teacher. She's just not going to pick on me for that. So I handed the story. She read that story. She hears it. Now, this is more like it, she says. She says, Come with me, Timothy. So she took me by the hand. I mean, you know, that she, I'll go anywhere with you, man. <laughs> and she took me around the school to all the other classrooms, and my writing was shown as an example of good writing. I was someone who never did well at school. There were times I was hardly ever at school. And here was my writing being shown as an example of good writing. The spelling was terrible and all that sort of stuff. But man, I started to realize, wow, I've got some power here. So you can see who inspired my writing, can't you? It was teachers. I had some really golden, lovely, wonderful teachers who inspired me, who led me to believe that I was more than what was going on in my life. I thought everybody got hurt in their families. I thought that was just what happened. I thought mum and dad beat their kids and that was it. That was just the deal. I didn't realise that that didn't happen in a lot of homes. And I started to question. And I was at school one day and I started to question. And I was sitting next to a friend and I said to him, Hey, does your dad hit you? And he goes, what do you mean? You know... Hit you. No, my dad doesn't do that. Your dad's not supposed to do that. And I said to him, oh, last night my dad did him. It's a big lump on the moon. I was worried. You're not supposed to have big lumps under your arms. It's not right, man. Something's wrong. You know, so I thought to myself, then something's wrong, man. This is not good. I think I might need help. So I, I, I said to him, you know, this is happening. He goes, no, no, that's not right. And I said to him, don't tell him anything. Because in my family, you shut your mouth, you don't tell anybody. Interval. We all went out to play, you know, have a good time. Bell rang, we come back into class, we're all sitting down, sitting at my desk. Where's my friend? Where's the teacher? My friend's not here. Where is he? The door opens, the teacher walks in. My friend walks in behind her. My heart just drops. It's like, oh, I thought I was going to be in trouble. I thought the teacher was going to be angry at me about talking about such things. Amazing, he's been getting beaten up. And I thought I was going to be in trouble with the school for getting beaten up. And if they talked about it at home, of course, whoa. So the teacher walks in, the boy is walking behind her, and I'm like, oh, man. I was angry at him. Shut your mouth. Why are you talking and telling others? She looks over at me. Timothy, Timothy, come with me, please. Oh, get all the out of my desk. Follow the teacher out into the cloakroom with the bags on. Stand there. Looking at my friend, thinking, man, not a freak. And the teacher's standing in front of me, and she says, pull up your shirt. Pull up your shirt. So I pull my shirt, and this teacher... Puts her hand in, rubs it down, feels that, and then all she does, 
as it burst into tears. She just burst into tears. She grabbed me and hugged me. She burst into tears. But when she did that, when she hugged me, I knew it wasn't right. That was big time time. Because it wasn't like today. It wasn't like today you have all these agencies, child and family in those days. There was none of it. And she hugged me. And when she did that, I knew it wasn't right. The problem was, after that, she took a special interest in me. She came back in the class. She picked up my desk and brought it over and put it next to her desk. That's the last thing I wanted. I hardly ever did my work because I didn't know what I was doing. So I'd be sitting next to her and I thought it was, man, I must be in serious trouble if I'm having to sit next to the teacher. You know the story, if you're sitting next to the teacher, it's very easy to You have done something right. You know? So here's me sitting next to the teacher and she'd look her around the room and you know, she'd be there marking work, she'd look around the room, make sure all the children were working. And then she'd look at me. How are you going, Timothy? Fine. Bring your work over to me. <laughs> Get out of my desk, take my book over. It's like, oh man, she's going to see what it's about went wrong. But I haven't even started my work. <laughs> So, you know, there's me bracing myself, waiting for this big, you know, big trouble or whatever. So she said, what does she do? She just puts her arm around me, pulls me in class, starts explaining the work nicely to me. This ain't so bad. <laughs> and you know, in those classrooms, when I had nice teachers, in those classrooms, I excelled those years. I did really well. Other classrooms, I didn't do so well. You know, my family had a reputation, just not in the school, in the community. You know, we were the Tipini kids, and uh, well, they didn't say Tipini, mostly in those days, they just said Tipini, the Tipini kids, <laughs> instead of Tipini. I didn't even know it was supposed to be pronounced Tipini. A lady from Telecom told me. <laughs> <laughs> She's asking about the phone, and she goes, oh, Yes, sir, this isn't Tiffany. I'm your daughter. Oh, it's Tiffany, I said. She goes, Excuse me? <laughs> oh, it's Tiffany. No, 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 boy. Your name is pronounced Tiffany. <laughs> you need to pronounce your name correctly. It's Tiffany. Now, you say it back to me. <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> I was a teenager. She's teaching me over the phone. And at the end of it, now you make sure you say your name right, boy. You get that name right. Yes, yes, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going around saying, Deepening. 